and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video we're looking at a large atmospheric ship which is called the Scrap Dropship, which is this thing right here. So this is designed to carry a bunch of small ships, perhaps even small fighters, and bring them over to their destination where you can deploy them and just go and do whatever you wanted to do. It's a very large ship which only has atmospheric thrusters on and it makes great use of the battered armor skins and the rusted armor skins, but you'll see more of that when we go around the side of it. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, here it is, the scrap dropship is 3,642 large blocks. It uses no mods and no DLCs and no scripts, so it's entirely vanilla design that's very easy to build if you ever wanted to build something like this. You could very easily scrap out the inside of this and turn it into a mobile base if you wanted to. It's a very easy refit considering how it's been set up. So let's start by going around the outside. Then we'll take a little look on the inside and fly it around a bit. So at the very front here we've got our glass bridge which has two control seats and one flight seat. Surrounding that is a bunch of battered armoured blocks and two large atmospheric thrusters to help us stop. If we come around to the side here, we've got some more atmospheric thrusters to help on our left and right, and oh boy, do we need help on our left and our right. And as we move along, we've got some lovely block work, and we've got some odd little patches on here of different colours and rusted arm blocks, just to make it look more like a scrap design. So coming down to here, this is going to be our hangers. So we've got little connectors that sit up there and rotating red lights, so you can see it in the dark. Now you do have to have ships with connectors on the top. I did try and connect up the Dex Fighter because that is one of the ships that is small enough to connect up on here. But sadly it doesn't have thrusters on the top. So putting it upside down, well, it's going to be somewhere around here. Down there, in fact, right there. But yes, you will need to have ships that have a connector on the top in order to connect them to this big thing. And as we move along, we've got plenty of hangers. Then we come across to this thruster feature right here, which has got two large atmospheric thrusters to help us stay off the ground and two more small atmospheric thrusters to help us stop. If I just come up and above here, there's not too much to talk about. It's just a lot of work being done by the skins and how the blocks have been set up. I do like how this top rim has been done. It looks very aesthetic. It's so simple, but it does look great. How it's created like a little bridge from the front all the way to the back. Anyway, coming around to the back of this thruster part, we've got one large amateur thruster to help us go forwards. As we come along to here, we've got some more different colours of armoured block skins, mossy block skins, and some more rusted block skins as we come along to the back. So we've got one more atmospheric thruster there. You can see a landing gear, which I'll come over to when I go underneath it. Then towards the back, we've got ourselves our main thrusters, which is going to help us push this thing along. This thing is exceptionally heavy, so all these thrusters are very much needed. And this is the back. Not too much going on here, just a lot of armoured blocks, and they've been placed quite nicely. Very nice housing on these large atmosphere thrusters, and the skins do look great with it. If we come up and above here, there's not too much else to talk about on here. It's just a great little design of how it goes from the back and the front, and connected along via little bridges all the way to the front. Then as we come down and underneath it, you'll see the landing gear at the front and two more at the back. And that is the little connectors where you connect your ship up to. We got ourselves our catwalks, which I presume, actually yeah, now I'm thinking about it, it does use the DLC pack because it's using the new catwalks. So just coming up to here and taking a look inside one of these little hangars, we've got some spotlights, there are some gyroscopes which have been placed there for our main ship to use. It's quite a nice way of hiding them actually, it adds a little bit of decoration while still being functional. Yes, there is a connector, there is a light, there is our DLC catwalk, and then we come up to there, which is how we're gonna get through the ship. And that about covers the outside of the scrap dropship. It's a very nice design, actually. It's so simplistic, but it looks fantastic, doesn't it? So let me get into my character, and now it's time to head on inside this ship. Now, there is no traditional doorway in. We do have to come underneath and just plop ourselves onto one of the catwalks. And this is basically the inside. So going through over to here will be through our bridge, but we can go all the way to the back of the ship if we need to do a bit of maintenance work on the gubbins of the ship. So through this door, we're going to see our large cargo container. We've got some more gyroscopes. And we can see around there, more gyroscopes. And down there, we've got a few more stuff, some large reactors, 
and lots and lots of gyroscopes. And then heading towards the front of the ship, we'll get to our bridge where we can control it. So all the way over here we have one door, which will lead us in here. We've got a lovely rusted design on the interior walls. And looking around, it's a very nice design, isn't it? Not too much is going on here, there's no lights in here because it was designed to be a scrapped ship, so it's like a converted transport ship, which got abandoned and got reimagined as a dropship. I think that's the story that goes with it. So we've got two controls these are on there which do nothing, but you could if you wanted to set it up to lock or unlock the connectors going around the ship. Then we come over to here, which is our flight seat, which is how we're going to fly it. Now we have nothing on our control panel, but we could if you want to set a few more things up. If you wanted to, and you could always attach on some timer blocks to have automatically closing doors and all that. But now it's time to take this thing for a little test flight and then we'll ram it into the ground. So going forwards, we're surprisingly fast for such a large and heavy ship. Stopping on the other hand is not too great, so you do have to make sure there's plenty of room between you and your destination. And also bear in mind if you're dropping off ships, make sure you're going at a steady pace. Going left and going right is exceptionally slow, to the point where if you're a little bit off balance, you will start falling towards the ground. So you do have to keep this perfectly flat at all times. There we go, that should be okay like that. Going backwards, it's fairly fast. And then going down, we have a lot of speed thanks to our weight and stopping can be a little bit problematic so we don't have much speed going up, not much thrust in fact going upwards. So you do kind of have to make sure there's plenty of room between you and the ground if you were trying to land it like so. That's going to be cutting it very very close. Ooh, and we just about stop in time. And then wiggling my mouse around, it's got a surprising amount of control for it. For such a large, heavy, lumbering ship, it doesn't have much weight to its control, so you could always just turn down some of the gyroscopes. But then again, once you've got a bunch of ships attached onto you and all that weight adds up, you may need it. So now let's go for a little fly around, and then just ram it into a cliff. So just flying it around, it does feel good when flying it. They've got just the right amount of control make it feel good when moving a mouse left and right while flying it. Yeah, it's just flying it around like so. Quite nice, isn't it? Like I said, you could very easily tear out that middle part there, that middle wall section. In fact, I shall try and do it right now because there's not too much else to talk about. So if you wanted to, you could do something like this and just remove a few of the blocks on the interior and then just flesh this out with whatever you needed. You could always put like a refinery and stuff on here. You could always put access ways for land vehicles to get in and out, it's up to you. This entire middle section here is optional. There's nothing important connecting it all up. Yes, we can just come back into here and hope I didn't ruin anything. Nope, we can still fly around all perfectly. And we'll just go and crash into this mountain. So yes, it's a lovely design and very easy to change to something else if you wanted to have a large lumbering mobile base. That's that, it'll be in the description below. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Oof. Let's see how we done here. Alright, so we just lost the cockpit. It wasn't too much. Anyway, yes. Thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye-bye.